Hello, everyone. This is Trevor May, VRF and Duck Free Split Technical Specialist here, back with another Tech Tip mini series. And on this Tech Tip mini series, we're going to be specifically focusing on the P6 error code that is witnessed more oftentimes than not at the high wall style indoor units. How to go about troubleshooting that P6 code, understanding what you need to do when you see the P6 code, and what other codes that you need to reference to effectively troubleshoot this code. So for those of you that are familiar with this code, chances are you've probably seen this P6 error code and were unable to find it in the service manual. This P6 code is a direct reference to look at the outdoor unit and troubleshoot that code at the outdoor unit. Now, there has been a lot of confusion around it. Where do I go? What does this P6 mean? A lot of guys have taken the outdoor unit service manual codes, which does have a P6 in it, which is an inverter module protection. And incorrectly troubleshot this code as an inverter module protection when in fact it is referencing one of two codes at the outdoor unit p1 which is your high pressure or p2 which is a low pressure code typically this comes up on multi-zone systems however it has been documented in the past through numerous circumstances and calls that i've encountered that it will display also on these single zone systems so again, this is not listed in the troubleshooting manual for the high wall style units. Now that's applicable for the 40 MAQ, which is our mid tier series, the 40 MHH, which is our entry tier series, and our 40 MPH, which is the high tier series. Please note on here as well that we do have uh, a product that has superseded the 40 MAQ, which is now the 40 MAH high wall unit, which will also have a digital display and also still display this P6 error code. Okay, and again, this is typically associated with a low pressure error code or high pressure error code in the system itself. Of course, good rule of thumb is if you see a P6 code on one or all of the indoor units, you need to make sure that you go to the outdoor unit to troubleshoot either that P1 or P2 pressure related code from there. Now, the first thing we want to make sure is confirm at our outdoor unit what our check code or error code is, whether it be low pressure or high pressure related, and that can help guide us through the troubleshooting process that we need to go through to effectively resolve the issue that we have. We need to make sure one that we're checking electrical connections on the low pressure switch as well to make sure no critters have gotten in the outdoor unit have chewed up any wires. And of course, we want to be able to check continuity through the switch to make sure that it is working properly. Now, of course, if you're tripped off on a high pressure or a low pressure code, that switch will be open. So don't get confused in your troubleshooting process by improperly diagnosing a switch that is supposed to be open and tripping off this code. Okay, you want to verify that the system will eventually reset. Typically with the high pressure, it's rate right about 490 PSIG that that will reset and then 44 PSIG on the low pressure side. So of course, you want to make sure that the switch has reset and then go ahead and cut power to the system and then effectively test it to make sure that there is continuity through it. If there's not continuity through it once the system resets or the error code never resets itself, chances are you've got a failed switch. And of course, you'd need to replace that high pressure or low pressure switch itself. In a multi-zone system, if this comes up on all of the indoor units, only run one indoor unit in that system while those others are off. Effectively, what we are doing is, is we're decreasing the amount of refrigerant volume that's needed in the system. So let's say, for example, we have four units that are running in either heating or cooling modes and the systems aren't generating heat or they're not generating cooling modes or they are displaying this P6 error. If we, let's say for example, shut three of those units off and only run one of them and that low pressure code doesn't come up, then you can confirm that you have a refrigerant volume issue or a refrigerant charge issue. In that case, you'd wanna go ahead and weigh out all of your refrigerant, verify that it does or doesn't match what is supposed to be the unit, which is factory charge plus any additional based on line set lengths. And then work from there, of course, if you have a leak, you need to make sure you document that whether it's on a coil, whether it's on line set or whether it's on a flared connection fitting. Okay, and again with these as well, you can always check Delta T's on there. Now you can see on this slide, I have listed on there, if the unit suddenly runs and produces a 20 degree Delta T or greater in the cooling mode, then you know if you're running one out of those four units, then you have that refrigerant volume issue. 
okay? Just like in the heat mode. The heat mode is pretty easy to diagnose, especially if you've done it in the past, but here are some tips that can help you work through or at least properly diagnose a refrigerant related issue. If you are in the heating mode, and for those of you that are familiar with how our heating mode operates, when you first turn the system on, you'll notice the louver will open all the way up and then go into a mid position and sit there and it will not run the fan. What it is doing is it's waiting for that indoor coil temperature to reach a certain temperature and degree Fahrenheit before it engages in low, medium, and then finally releases this mode or this protection in high fan speed mode. And then the louver opens all the way up and starts discharging heat into the space to warm it up. <clears throat> now, what this is called is our anti-cold air function. So essentially, again, we're waiting for that indoor coil temperature to warm up before we engage the fan, which is to prevent blowing any cold air on the customer and to try to prevent any temperature swings in that space to keep the customer happy. Now, for example, if you have the same scenario, four indoor units, and you're getting this P6 code on all of them, and you go to your outdoor unit, and you're getting a P2 code, one thing you can do is shut the other three units off and only run one in heat. What you'll notice is, is that that louver will sit there and it will wait for that coil to warm. It will then open up that louver once that coil temperature maximum has been reached and it'll start discharging air. You can turn units on one by one of those other three that you just turned off. If you start to notice that some or all three of those other units are stuck in the mid position and maybe you're only running their fan speeds at a low or medium, or maybe they're not even running the fan speed at all, you can confirm that you do not have enough refrigerant volume to warm up that indoor coil thermistor to be able to properly engage the louver to fully open and to get into a high fan speed. That's a direct indication that you have a refrigerant charge issue. Okay, and again, that's just some of the things you can do both on the heating and on the cooling side to be able to help diagnose these P6 code issues. Okay, another thing we can check on there is if only one head has this error code, we can start looking at our EXVs or our EEVs or LEVs, whatever terminology or acronym that you're comfortable calling them, they're all pointing towards the same thing, which is our electronic expansion valves. We need to start focusing on those electronic expansion valves because we know that they control refrigerant flow, not only for heating, but for cooling as well. And there is a specific way and a specific video that I have focused on how to own those out and what you're looking for when you're owning out EXVs. However, we want to check and make sure that the coils, which our EXVs have four coils or a four step motor on there, that they ohm out correct. If they do ohm out correct, the next thing that we want to take a look at is going to be if we have any corrosion or this oxidation that's built up on the post or the inside of the coil itself. Now, how these coils work is that they generate a magnetic field between those four coils, which in turn, if you look to the picture on the right, that's where our coils are, and that coil sits on top of this post. Inside of this post is the actual needle that's going to allow refrigerant to go to an indoor unit or restrict refrigerant to go to an indoor unit so we can create a proper pressure drop and feed the correct amount of refrigerant into the head as necessary as the load changes, as coil temperature changes. There's a bunch of different criteria that control that. But it's very similar to a TXV, except the EXV makes much more precise movements to that actual needle. Now back to what we were talking about with this corrosion on here. When we pulse these valves, what happens is, is we generate a magnetic field inside of the valve head on there. And in turn, that magnetic field either opens or closes the needle on the post and for reference, that would be the silver post with the oxidation on it on the picture to the left. When we get this excessive corrosion on there, it can block that magnetic field from being able to open or close that needle to be able to properly manage refrigerant. Okay, now what you would do if you found a situation like this, you would take some steel wool or something very soft. We're not looking for a abrasive sandpaper or a heavy grit on here because we don't want to scuff it up. We just want to get that oxidation out of the inside of the coil and also off of the post. Okay, and this should be something as well too on your routine maintenance that you're able to go ahead and take that power head off of the post itself look inside of it, make sure that you don't have any oxidation. And if you do, to make sure that you clean it to avoid any potential issues in the future. Okay, again, this is one of those things where 
We have seen it in the past. It does take a significant amount of this uh, oxidation that builds up on the post body and inside of the coil itself to cause issues. So it definitely should be something that's a part of your routine maintenance agreement with your customers on their equipment. Okay, this isn't everything that could cause a high pressure or a low pressure trip. Of course, we need to get back to bare basics, such as are my indoor and outdoor coils clean? Are my filters clean on the indoor unit? Are both my indoor and outdoor fan motors working properly? Do I have enough airflow to be able to pass through the coil to control the refrigerant or boil off or condense refrigerant as needed? So of course we wanna check those basic things off before we start really diving deep into the nitty gritty with the EXVs and the different things that we can manipulate for charge. As a good rule of thumb, when you're seeing a P1 or a P2 air code associated with this P6 on the indoor unit, the first things you should be looking at not only are charge, but looking at the coil condition and whether they're clean or need to be cleaned, outdoor and indoor fan motors, service valves are fully open and not just cracked, especially on new installations. And then we can start shifting our focus to do I have oxidation or corrosion buildup on my EXV itself? Are my EXV coils working properly or is one of those coils failed causing that valve to either get stuck in a certain position or fail open or fail closed? Again, it's about just using common sense and properly working the air code for this P6, which is related to a P1 or a P2 pressure code at your outdoor unit display. Okay, again, as I do with every tech tip, I just like to remind you guys that we have continuing education, not only on the ductless product line, but also on the VRF product line as far as service, installation, application, and product education for both lines. We have workshop classes that are two hours long that have a specific focus on a particular area, whether that be the application or installation or service. And of course, we have our traditional four hour classes that we do in the spring and the fall time in each of our branches. So that's gonna be at the Erie branch, the Shinston branch, the export branch, and also our headquarters, the Pittsburgh or Crafton office. Okay, and of course, if you need or can't get a hold of me, Remember, I am your first point of contact, not your only point of contact. So my information with my phone number, direct extension and email is up on the screen. So please feel free to reach out with any questions, comments, or concerns. If you can't get a hold of me, you're always more than welcome to call the three other gentlemen in the technical support department. Their names and direct extensions are listed there. And if you need to get a hold of a product manager, both the ductless and the VRF product managers, names, phone numbers, extensions, and emails are listed right below mine. So hopefully this helped you give a little bit more insight on what this P6 air code is, how to approach it, and remember to take your time, don't overthink everything, and properly work the code. And of course, if you have any questions, if you're unsure about something, or if you just want to verify something, you're always more than welcome to reach out, shoot me an email, and the more we stay in contact, the better the troubleshooting situation will most likely work out. I thank you guys for taking time out of your day to watch this video. I'll see you guys on the next Tech Tip.